Hi, everyone. I am so excited to have Whitney here. Uh, she's going to talk a little bit more about differentiation and how to do that in your classroom. I feel like it's such a big topic. And I know I work with a lot of teachers that really do struggle with the differentiation aspect of it, of like, I have so many different levels in my classroom. I have so many different needs. Like, how am I going to really put this together in a lesson and make it cohesive? So Whitney's going to share all of her tips and tricks about it. Um, but before we get into that, I'm going to let Whitney introduce herself and just say like, hey, how's it going? So tell us a little bit about you. Um, I'm Whitney. Um, I uh, originally lived in Missouri, moved out here to Arizona and went to school to become a teacher. Um, but I actually started out as a para um, and I loved it so much. And so I wanted to go back to school, become a teacher. And so I am on my 10th year of teaching in a resource um, setting at an elementary school. So I love it. Yeah, I love that. If you haven't gone back and read my blogs from Whitney about paraprofessionals, I feel like she gives such great insight from that viewpoint, knowing she's been a paraprofessional and then transitioned to being a teacher, which is so different. So I love that. And what are you doing now? Um, It kind of like my grades kind of change depending on the caseload. Normally I do like fourth and fifth, but now I'm doing kinder, first and fourth grade. So Totally switched it up this year, but I love it. <laughs> wow, that is a switch. I feel like, yeah, you have more of the upper grades for elementary. Okay, yeah. that's a big totally switch. Totally been different this year. <laughs> Very cool. So yeah, like having a kindergartner, first grader, and then a fourth grader, yeah. um, multiple of those grade levels, like that's a lot. And yeah. to differentiate for that many years of grades, like I feel yeah. like that's a huge thing. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> tell us a little bit more about like, what is differentiation? Yes, we talk about it and oh, different levels and yada, yada, yada. But like, can you break it down to like, what does that actually look like? I'm like a person that likes to like, just simplify it as much as I can. Cause I just get so overwhelmed with all the things. And so, um, really just tailoring whatever lesson it is or worksheet assignment or homework, tailoring it down to specifically that student's needs. Um, so if you can focus on like what they specifically need, then you can, uh, accommodate that. And that's you differentiating it for that student. So how do you know when you need to differentiate? Um, sometimes I'll already know ahead of time, like, okay, I'm going to, this student's going to need a multiplication chart to be able to do this, or they might need a number line to do this. Um, sometimes I'll work with them and be like, Hmm, they're not getting it something there's, you know, they just need a little extra support. Mm -hmm. And so then I will um, have manipulatives or I will give them three choices of an answer. So those types of things. And then they're like, oh, and then they start getting it. And you're like, okay, that's what that student needed. So then I can go from there and um, eventually not have to um, differentiate it so much, but start from there. Yeah, I know the big one that I used actually last week was I gave some students calculators and other students didn't get calculators. Like that was a big one where it was just like, all right, if you need this, this is a tool you can use. And like, it's no pressure if they didn't want to use it, but it's available to them, right? Like, and I love that yeah. choice too of like, hey, you have a number line if you need it. Um, but, you know, it's a tool to be there. Yeah. So yeah. very cool. What is some of your favorite ways to differentiate a worksheet? Let's just start with the basics. Um, a worksheet, sometimes, like I said, like giving them, instead of having them just come up with the answer or solve and figure out the answer, um, sometimes just having like an answer bank and, um, having that, mm -hmm. um, or if they need it to be even a little bit more specific then have like three options of answers for them. Yeah. Um, sometimes like kind of like what you were saying, if I have students that can, um, solve it independently, then they'll go ahead and solve it. But if some of, um, still struggle with those operations, then I'll let them use a calculator, but write down what, what operation did you use? So now that tells me, oh, they know how to do the operation. They know which one to use. They just weren't sure how to like figure it out. Yeah. Um, so that would be another way. So as far as a, a worksheet, that's kind of what I would do. But like we mentioned, the manipulatives or multiplication chart, number chart, whatever that might, yeah. they might need for that too. So. For sure. And I'm going to bring an ELA example into it just because I feel like okay. sometimes hearing the different varieties that you could be mm -hmm. differentiating is super helpful. So yeah. I feel like this year I've been spending a lot of time differentiating like vocabulary worksheets of like 
finding these crazy terms that like are only in science or only yeah. in the book that we read. Um, and so what I've been doing is everybody's got the words and then you have a blank box next to you. And so either like, yes, you can follow along with the definition that I have on the board and you can write it in the box. Um, I also have it as like a cut and paste activity, which also works as a great word bank um, yeah. or definition <laughs> bank where you can like copy it from what's in front of you rather than looking at the board. Um, and so like, yeah, it's a cut and paste. It's a match. It's a write myself. Um, sometimes it is just like a, I put numbers inside that word bank or answer bank or definition bank, whatever you want to call it. And yeah. like, then in the box, they type, they write one, two, three, four, or wherever it is. And so like, they don't have to do that much writing. Um, Cause sometimes the whole task of like writing a whole sentence about what this word is, is so overwhelming. Yeah. Or even just writing down the page number where they can find that definition. Those types of things are so helpful too. Yeah, for sure. I love that. Um, so I feel like sometimes a lot of teachers have moved away from the worksheets or paper pencil type things. So how would you differentiate an online activity? I'm um, so glad you asked that. I love, my students love online. So, and it just kind of switches it up too. Instead of just having yeah. a pencil paper. Um, mm -hmm. I love boom cards. So I use yeah. a lot of boom cards for my students. Um, and I'm, if people aren't familiar with it, you can literally assign um, specific boom, car boom cards to each student. And that's a huge differentiation right there. Um, also, I'm not sure if people not, I don't know if everyone realizes this, that you can print out the boom cards too. Mm -hmm. So um, they can either do it on the computer or as a task card. So I'll give them the choice too, um, if they wanted, which how, how they want to do that one. So boom cards all the way is how I, yes. how I've been doing it. Yes, for sure. And then you can hide certain cards in there too. Cause I know sometimes I've had like an addition set from like zero to 10, but like maybe the student's only working on zero to five. So I'm hiding all of the cards that are above five. Yeah. Um, and again, you're differentiating it that way, but that might not be for every student. That might just yeah. be for that one student. And so and it gives you all the data too. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so amazing. I love yeah. it. How much time the student took on it? Did they mm -hmm. uh, answer a couple different answers before they got to that one? Like there's so many different things that you can see. I know I probably will have to do some type of boom card series as well. <laughs> we'll have to. It's so good. <laughs> yes, it is so good. Um, I feel like it is such a game changer once you realize like what it can do for you. Yeah. So, yeah. um, so when a student is struggling, like in the moment, if you're like, I didn't think you would struggle with this, like, how do you decide what to differentiate and then how to differentiate it? So like, do I move some problems? Do I like let them pick? Like, you know, how do you figure that out? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, obviously knowing your student, but I feel like I like to just pick like, is it the skill or are they not understanding the directions? Cause sometimes that can be it too. Mm -hmm. um, so honestly, I just sit like in a small group with them and then just try to figure it out or I'll try different things. Um, if they're not understanding it when I'm explaining it, I go straight to like a visual person and that's maybe just cause I'm more visual, but I feel like it just kind of helps. So I'll go more visual and then just kind of see if they're starting to grasp the concept, like, okay, I'm going to go towards that direction with mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Or sometimes even having another student explain it some, somehow just like works too. So it can be as simple as that. Exactly. I love the moments where you can like go back and reteach. I know that's not really differentiating, but it, it kind of is like, hey, like, hey, I see there's two or three kids here that really need some, some more support. So I might pull you in a small group or have like one student explain it to you again or give another yeah. example. Um, like you are, you are trying to find those small moments where this is the group that's not getting this right now mm -hmm. um and everybody else can continue to work um so you're not slowing the other people down as well so I think yeah, that's or even like if like if they can't tell me the answer maybe they can show me the answer like something like that yeah I know we have one student who will like calculate it and then instead of writing it they'll verbally say it and then the teacher will write it um yeah. it's another great way to just kind of bring it in together so mm -hmm. Um, how do you involve a student maybe in this process as well? Because we want some ownership for them to pick which way they want to show what they know or to give us an answer. So how do you get them in that process? 
Um, I just like to give choices sometimes. So would you like to do it this way? Kind of like with the boom cards. Like, would you rather do the boom cards or a task card? It's literally the same thing. <laughs> um, but I'm just giving them that choice. So I think of what skill is it and what, how are they going to like show mastery and then give them an option of different ways that they can like show that mastery of that skill. Um, so I like to do that. And when it's, when I'm trying to come up with, um, like, what do they need? So sometimes I'll say, do you want to use um, a manipulatives or do you want to draw them down or something like that? So just giving them options, I mm -hmm. think helps at, at least at the beginning. And then when they get older or more time goes by, um, I can say like, what do you need here? How can we, how would you like to do this? And now they have some options under their tool belt of how they can, that they can kind of choose. So my fourth graders are great about choosing my kinder and first grade. I'm, I'm still showing them, like, do you want to do option A or option B? So mm -hmm. um, kind of depends on that grade level. Um, but that's how I personally do it. Yeah, I love that, giving them more options in their toolbox to use. Yes, you can use manipulatives, you can use a number line, you can use a hundreds chart, you can use all these things that are available to you. Oh, you don't like these manipulatives? Okay, let's use mini erasers, right? There's yeah. so many different things that you can kind of bring into it. Um, and yes, a lot of it is like on the fly figuring it out, um, oh, yeah. which is so so tricky because we do that all day long. And oh, so yeah. just another thing to think about to differentiate an activity is just sometimes just like, just do the worksheet or just do the activity. But yeah, like, yeah, really finding that thing that's going to work for them is really what makes a difference. And sometimes it's the smallest thing, kind of how it's like, um, like doing less problems, like folding the piece of paper in half. Yeah. I do that all the time. And now I notice that my students will just automatically do that just to not be so overwhelmed. So just those little things really do go a long way. Yeah. And there's like the ways to modify it. Like, yes, do all the odd problems, do all the even problems, yeah. right? Do the top of the worksheet, do the bottom of the worksheet, right? Like giving choices for that. Like there's totally ways to, to like modify the activity. Cause I feel like there is a lot of like overwhelm or there's too many problems or this is so hard, but like they're seeing just like 15 problems on a page and they're like, I have no idea what to do. Yeah, um, yeah. Or like five paragraphs on a page. Like, okay, great. Let's start with the first paragraph. You read the first sentence. I'll read the second sentence. Like, yeah. let's do some popcorn back and forth, right? Easy ways to just kind of break it down for them. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like ultimately that's kind of what differentiation is, just like breaking it down so to make yeah. it not seem as cumbersome, overwhelming, exhausting, yeah. whatever. Exactly. Because if that's what they need, then you're meeting them where they're at, so... Yeah. Do you have any other tips and tricks for differentiating that we haven't talked about yet? Um, an easy one that I do and the students love it is like uh, color coordinating different ones. So I'll um, have like, even if it's like word problems around the room, I'll have them um, written in different color or like on a different color piece of paper. So I'm like, all right, you're blue, you're purple, you're green, and then go solve those colors. Um, and it's one's addition, one's multiplication, one's word problem. So kind of doing something like that. Yeah. Um, I know with like Easter coming up, I've already been thinking like, oh, it's going to be so fun doing the eggs because I can do it different colors mm -hmm. with that. Um, so sometimes it's as simple as just doing colors and differentiating it that way with what they're working on. Um, yeah. And then I just use those boom cards a lot. So yeah, like I love that because that's totally like a way to hide that you're giving a different level or a different yeah. difficulty level to it. Like, um, like, yes, we have a student working on addition. You're in the pink eggs or on the pink sheet of paper, right? Like go find all the pink eggs. Those are yours. Yeah. And then all and the yellow eggs. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I love that. And especially because so many, I feel like so many people ask me, how are you, how do you juggle all these students with IEPs with all these different types of goals and it's stuff like that. That's, that's how. That's so fun. <laughs> I feel like I, I can think of so many other ways of like, oh, we can make candy hearts for Valentine's Day and like all yes. these other things, right? Where oh, yeah. Just, like, I've done like paper fun. airplanes and threw them all over the room and yeah. solve it and then you can throw it. Like. Oh my gosh. I love that. Yeah. Like a functional way to like throw things in the classroom. <laughs> yeah. Or, like the little snowballs and for, yeah. you know. Right. Like, all of these things. That. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> so many great ideas. Yeah. Do you have any other resources that you can share with us or anything else that you found really helpful other than boom cards uh, <laughs> for differentiating? Um, I just, a lot of it for me is just like math, like the online math games or yeah. um, just like online, um, just those math ones that you can come across for like math games and stuff like that or yeah. YouTube a lot. So 
Um, I just honestly use a lot of those. And of course, TPT, but um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Do you yeah. have any favorite math websites for games? I'm trying to think of them. Like yeah. my mind is so blank I can, right now. It's okay. I can share a few that I've been yeah. using lately. Um, ABC, yeah, is always a really like fan favorite yes. uh, mm-hmm. for no matter what grade, which is so silly. Yeah um prodigy is a good one cool math games even my son like loves prodigy that's a great one yeah cool math games is another one that's a big one Mm -hmm. um ixl if you do have an account with your school i feel like has been a really helpful one because you can really differentiate to their level um Mm -hmm. i feel like there's one more but i can't quite think of it I feel Uh, like it's on the tip of my tongue like i've it's like all over my instagram but i'm like i literally am like drawing a blank yeah, I can't think of it either. But if I do, I will leave the links below for all okay. of those and any more that we come up with that maybe we just have forgotten. So, yeah, and of course, it. if you have any questions, you are welcome to comment below. If I don't have the answer, I will ask Whitney and we'll make sure to get the answer for you. So I hope this has been helpful and thanks for being here. Yay. <laughs>